to another episode of In Your Business. Today, we're going to meet with a very interesting entrepreneur, a young lady from Connorsville, Indiana, who started her own business because of her love for animals. And it's kind of interesting because she's talked to me a little bit about this business because she's been in my class. And it's always fun for me to have a student on the show so I can not only learn more about the student, but also learn about the growth in business. So, Destiny, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Tim. So Destiny, it's going to be fun for me as well as for our audience today to just kind of get to know you a little bit then get to know a little bit about the business and some of the opportunities and some of the you know things that you've had to, to go with in the business, which is not uncommon for entrepreneurs. We always learn as we do. And I know having you in class recently was a lot of fun because you have your business. And so all the things we talk about in the business plan are things you're actually doing. And so it's fun for me to see that actually happening. So before we actually get in and start talking about the business, let's talk about you. Let's talk about you as a young entrepreneur. Um, Destin, did you grow up in Connorsville? I did, yeah. I grew up in Connorsville uh, all through my childhood. I was very blessed to uh, have been actually adopted into a family at six months old. And they really pushed me forward my whole childhood to succeed, to get my education. And my dad was very entrepreneurial himself. So I always say I got the bug from my dad. Good, good. So you grew up there in Connersville um, in, in the entrepreneurial spirit of things. So as you went through college and such, were you thinking of becoming an entrepreneur or, or what were your thoughts? Absolutely. I was thinking about becoming an entrepreneur. Really all through high school, I had my own small business where I was offering dog training and grooming out of my house. I started that when I was actually 14, and I always knew that I wanted to kind of be my own boss, and I really have always had a love for animals, and that's been a big guide for that. So, so basically, then at 14 years old, you started your own dog grooming business. Now, did you have to get some kind of training for that, or did it just happen? I actually showed dogs um, through 4-H for, at that point, several years. I went full 10 years to 4-H, and... Um, because I traveled and went to different kinds of dog shows, I got the opportunity to talk with many people and kind of learn as I went. Of course, there was a learning curve with that. I was lucky that uh, people were forgiving because I was young as I learned. And I always upfront that if I haven't groomed that kind of dog before, or that kind of haircut that I was learning and they were more than willing to allow me to do that. Very good. So, so then at the age of 14, you decided, hey, I'm going to do this and make money. Is that kind of what the motivator was? What, what were you thinking? Yeah, so I really wanted to be able to kind of have spending money of my own, save up. At the time, I really wanted a car so that I could go with my friends places. And while I knew that my parents would have helped me, I wanted to be able to say that I did it myself. So um, I started working at a vet's office in the kennels, walking dogs, cleaning, helping uh, the vet techs. And then on the side, I started my own business so that I could kind of gain a little bit more income there as well. Did you save enough money for the first car? I did. Yeah, I actually did end up buying my own car. Um, I didn't get my license for a, a while, um, not because I failed my test, but because driving kind of made me nervous particularly backing up, <laughs> but I did end up buying my own car. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so beyond that, then you, you went through high school working in your, your entrepreneurial venture, mm -hmm. and then you began college and in college again, is it entrepreneur? Is that what you studied? Um, originally my plan was to become an optometrist, which is very different. <laughs> I, um, had planned to become an optometrist and, uh, off you know, my later years in high school, I thought that that was what I wanted to do. Again, I liked the idea of starting at a practice and then opening my own business. Um, but as I got older, um, once I entered my freshman year of college, we had some life changes. I lost my dad, he passed away, and I chose to move back home. And I had originally moved to uh, Muncie, Indiana, in Wichita State. Um, but I didn't want to be away from my family. I, I wanted to be with my mom. So when I moved home, I decided to change to uh, business administration through Indiana University. And that opened up a whole new world for me, seeing that not only were my ideas possible, you know, it gave me kind of the tools to start running that business 
more on like the professional side uh, that I would have probably stumbled a lot more if I had not gotten that education. Okay, well, it's sad, and I'm sorry to hear about your loss while you were in college. Um, but at the same time, it sounds like you 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 stepped up and you've taken on a lot of responsibility, and that's not something I hear a lot about when people are in college. And and so it's it's admirable that you were able to take on and balance all these different responsibilities, start your own business, earn your college degree, all at the same time. And I know your family life is is involved in that as well. So uh, you're you're finishing your college degree now. Is that correct? Yes, so I did have to take things a little bit more slowly uh, because I, at, uh, at 20, I bought my own home and I did live on my own for a while prior to getting married. Uh, my husband and I are both college students and uh, we've since grown. We now have a little girl who's seven months old. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, they all have a pretty good hand in it. You know, my husband is very, very supportive very helpful if anything that I need. His family loves dogs just as much as I do, loves the breed that I raised, you know, wholeheartedly. They really had a huge hand in helping me choose what breed I wanted to add to my family. And uh, I've been very blessed in that aspect. Well, Destiny, it seems like you're really balancing things really well, which is what entrepreneurs do, okay? And, and so it's, it's really fun to watch you be able to, to, to blossom and just grow with this. But I think it's time for us to talk about the business. So what is your business? Yeah, so my business is actually called Desi's Doodles. I raise and train dogs. We have uh, poodles, labradoodles, and golden doodles. I actually started with my first uh, dogs that we were going to add to the program back in 2017. And we did, smart, we did start very small. Um, we started with uh, my female, her name is Athena, and my um, boomer. And because we're dealing with living, breathing things, it wasn't an automatic, you know, start. We had to not only allow them to grow, we also had to make sure that we were doing the correct health testing and we were following the guidelines, not only for just a lab or just a poodle, because those two were both labradoodles, we had to incorporate uh, both of those things so that we were honoring the breeds, honoring the dogs and what they are capable of. Um, you know, over the years we've grown by not only keeping dogs back from our program that I have hand raised, we have also, you know, slowly started adding animals from other programs to us so that we can grow in that aspect as well. Um, but a big portion of what we do is obviously raising puppies. But the exciting thing about our, our business is what happens after the puppies, you know, go home. So we have been very blessed, um, you know, with my dog training background, with my background of having the opportunity to work in different vet clinics and, you know, learn about the importance of animal husbandry um, to take my skills and aid families. We've had dogs go to be diabetic alert dogs. We've had dogs go uh, to be facility dogs. We have one who actually is in a school system up in Wisconsin and she is the district mascot for the school K through 12. And she's actually trained to be an on-site therapy dog for the students so that, you know, in time of crisis or if the students are struggling or just for fun for visits, she's able to go in and be a part of that community. And, um, you know, our dogs, many, many of our dogs actually have gone to be therapy dogs and including our own dogs here, you know, we do a lot of, uh, a lot of work in the community volunteering at nursing homes. We've started a program out of Cambridge City Library uh, where that allows the children to sign up and then practice reading to the dogs, which is an amazing thing. It has a huge impact because it's hard for a child to practice reading in front of an adult, especially when they know they're gonna make a mistake. The dogs are non-judgmental. Non they're not gonna correct them. It's just a nice, calm environment. And I've really seen what it's like to help people and empower people through the power of a dog. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, Destiny is kind of interesting because you got a lot of things going on here. Okay. Yeah. And so when you talk about having young people read to a dog, that intrigues me. 
I've not heard of that before. Is that something that goes on around the United States or is that something you came up with? No, it's actually something that is becoming more and more popular. Um, people are having dogs come into schools, come into libraries, and whether it's a group session where somebody sits down and reads to the kids, dogs are an incredibly calming option for children. Um, you know, it's very therapeutic for them to be able to sit and to pet the dog. And especially for kids who might be a little bit hyperactive, that gives them an opportunity to keep their hands busy and keep their mind open so that they can learn while otherwise they would be fidgeting. Um, their focus, they can really struggle with that. And um, not only that, you know, it gives them an opportunity to have something that's affectionate towards them and uh, loving towards them. And it creates a really positive environment. Sure, sure. No, I think that sounds like a great addition to the business. So uh, now, are you strictly dogs? Is it, is it 100% dogs with your business? Yes, it is. I do love cats. I have two cats of my own, but um, right now we are only doing dogs and we don't have any uh, plans to expand beyond that. Okay, okay. And is everything done from your home or do you actually have a separate place from your home or are you still doing a home-based business? Yeah, so we are a home-based business. Um, all of the puppies are well right here in our home. We have been working on building a little bit uh, on our house so that we can have an area, especially in the winter here in Indiana, it can be very cold. And we mm -hmm. offer for puppies that are born in our program to stay with us an additional eight weeks for training before going home. And because at that age, they're not completely vaccinated, we're limited to what we can do as far as public access. Uh, so by building a room where we can actually do it indoors, it really opens up a lot of opportunities. But uh, something that's really special about our program that makes a huge difference, not only in you know, the quality of our puppies, but also their temperament is we have a program called the Guardian Program. None of our dogs live in kennels. We don't have kennels on our property. You know, I'm a big fan of crate training for when we're not home or at night for the safety of the dog so that if any of the puppies were teething, they're not chewing on something that they shouldn't. But our guardian program actually allows our dogs to live in a family and within the vicinity near us so that we have access to them. And we've created a little community. So they have, you know, a very short career with us. We breed only for a couple of years after all of their health testing has been completed. And then we spay them. And those dogs are never going to end up in an animal shelter because they already have a family prepared for them that has spent their whole life with them. And um, that also allows us to have a little bit more freedom of space for all of the curriculum we do with the puppies. Well, that's one of the things that really impressed me was I know when, you had, when I had you in class, we, we talked a lot about the dogs. And I could see your passion. I could witness the things that you're doing. We, we discussed the Guardian program because uh, I travel a lot and it certainly would be great to have a dog. And, and we discussed it because when, when, when it's one of your dogs, it's one of the dogs that you breeded, that you, that you brought to life, um, you're more passionate about it. You're very interested in it. So you're there as a partner. So when a person gets a dog from you, it's not just that you sold them a dog and you're gone. You actually, you care. And, and so you want to know what's going on with that dog from, from birth all the way through, even if somebody takes it home and you don't see it for a year or two, you still care about that dog. And I think that passion of your business is incredible. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that, you know, uh, something that we do that I really enjoy as we try to actually schedule, we call them doodle romps. We've been so blessed in our community that at our, our local park, we actually have a, a safe area dog park for the dogs to run. And we get as many of our dogs, you know, our alumni, we call them, together a couple times a year so that they can run, they can play. It gives, you know, our people, our families, an opportunity to get to know each other um, outside of online because we also have a Facebook page that's private just for our families so that they can ask questions, they can share posts and not have to worry about, you know, any kind of judgment because I'm here for the lifetime of the dog. The dogs, you know, are a humongous commitment. That's 15 plus years if you're really, really lucky. And that's the goal is by breeding, you know, as healthy as we can. I don't have any doubt in my mind that at any point in time I wanted to reach out with one of my family and have a conversation. I could. 
I sent all of them Christmas cards this year. <laughs> good, good. And, um, you know, that's something that's very important to me. And I'm not going to pound them and say, hey, how's it? how are they doing? How are they doing? Every now and then I might check in and, you know, getting updates really just make my day. The pictures and seeing what they're up to is just amazing to me. Destiny, one thing I want to make sure we do, I want to run out of time, is that um, I want to know all the services that you do. So, so can you kind of give me an idea of what it is that you do? I do dabble a little bit in the grooming, not as much now, not so much to the public, just because my own dogs actually do keep me very busy. Uh, doodles and poodle breeds are, you know, pretty high maintenance when it comes to grooming to prevent matting, which can be kind of painful. So I offer the grooming for our dogs and our guardian dogs so that they can come here and uh, it keeps them in the look that I like. And then it also, you know, helps keep them their in their skin healthy and their coat healthy. So, so basically then if somebody is looking for how, what, what type of dogs do you have? Yeah. So we have Labradoodles um, and Golden Doodles. Uh, we have a male poodle and a female poodle, but um, typically our poodle is actually used towards the Golden Doodle. Um, as far as the breeds go. So if a person is looking for a dog, then the process would be to contact you and then you stay in communication with them. And then how soon would a person get a dog if they were to contact you? Yeah, so as we have grown, you know, we went through a little bit of growing pains where we were only having one or two litters a year. We only let our females have one litter a year um, to honor them, allow them to heal after having puppies and gain their weight back and everything. Um, I'd say our average weight could be anywhere from, you know, three to six months. Okay. So that's not bad at all. So within three to six months, a person could be receiving a dog and then um, you help them with that training and such as well. Is that correct? Yes. So if they wanted to do training uh, before the puppy comes home, we can modify it to meet their needs. You know, the shorter the training program, the less we're able to do with the dog. But from eight to 16 weeks, which is an eight week program, we offer to work on basic obedience. Uh, we introduced crate training, uh, which is a big one for families because puppies going home, even being familiar with the crate at eight weeks old is a big difference between 16 weeks old when they're sleeping through the night. Um, but we do their basic commands, sit down, we stay leash walking. Um, we have had people contact us. Like I said, we've had diabetic alert dogs. That's a big one. It's a huge commitment for us and for them because those dogs, you know, any kind of service dog has to go to higher training even beyond us. Um, but with our diabetic alert dogs from day one, we are introducing them doing what's called scent imprinting. And we take uh, mouth swabs from individuals who have diabetes that are experiencing either a very high or low. And we work to create a positive reinforcement with that scent so that once they leave us, they can continue that training. That's awesome. So it seems like you know a lot about the business. Um, I want to get into the business just a little bit, though, because as you know, in class, there's a lot of things that, that I, I try to teach the entrepreneur. And we have to look at everything from marketing and sales into pricing, into management. There's so many different things that go into it. And you, as an entrepreneur, are responsible for all those things. I mean, you have to pay your taxes. You have to have the insurance. You've got the different things going on. And I mean, there's different times that you have to think about, you know, the public even coming to your home, you know, to pick up a dog and such. So what's it like to be an entrepreneur and have all that responsibility? I'm not going to lie. It can be really difficult, especially doing something like raising dogs. I have um, spoke to people, you know, about doing taxes. And I had somebody go, that's a hobby. That's not a business. And I said, oh, no, it's a business. And it's my job to make sure that I'm doing my due diligence as a business owner. Having the competition of backyard breeders who they pocket all that money and they don't have to pay their taxes. So their prices are a little bit lower or, um, you know, paying for all of the marketing and everything. It can definitely be something that if you don't do your homework and you just jump into it blindly and think, I'm just going to get my feet wet and see how it goes. You are going to end up in the red 100%. Like it's very hard to break even if you're not careful. And that's something that, you know, we have to really make sure that we are keeping our numbers up and um, having a healthy balance between being active and 
keeping our social media and everything active and creating a larger audience and reaching a larger audience throughout the United States um, or even, you know, internationally. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to overstep your bounds and what you're capable of because, like I said, we're still small. Our, you know, funding is, is something that can be very confusing when you first start out and it, it's not something you learn overnight. Sure, sure. Well, that's a part of it. I mean, a lot of it's doing as well, but then you can do some research and try to find out what other people are doing is also, it's so fun to watch you balance everything though. Like I said, from life to the business, to school, I mean, everything that you're doing is just admirable. So, but when we talk about the entrepreneurial side, what's been the most rewarding part of it for you? Absolutely seeing what happens when the puppies go home, seeing the lives that they impact. You know, I started taking classes a couple of years ago through an empowered breeder program. That's been a big part too, is being able to join a community of other breeders who really have the drive to not only hold themselves accountable, hold other breeders accountable, so that you are having an impact on people. You're changing people's lives. And I have seen my dogs change people's lives. I had a family who got a diabetic alert dog for their young son. And um, I worked with their trainer when he left me. He, when she left me, she went straight to the trainer. And, um, you know, that's been almost two years. That's been two years ago at this point. And a couple months ago, I got a call saying, I have to tell you an update on the dog. Our son finally got his own bedroom. And to me, that is just an amazing thing because they were so scared, you know, when they first contacted me, he was only six years old and his diabetes were so out of control. They were so scared, you know, that something was going to happen in the night. He had to sleep in their room and he had never had his own bedroom or the ability to sleep in his own bedroom. And to see that one of my dogs had such a positive impact on him that really could change his life in the course of his life and save him is an amazing thing. I think it's interesting that that's kind of what you're passionate about is changing people's lives and having that kind of effect. But at the same time, your business has had that on your life in such a short amount of time, you already have so many different stories to share, but I, I want to, I want to kind of fast forward here just a little bit and talk about something that just happened in your life just recently. It's something that for the last couple of years that I've really been teaching in class is the Kickstarter and Kickstarter is fairly new. And a lot of people don't realize what it is yet, but I love it when a student takes hold of it and understands it. And that's what you did. And so we, we discussed Kickstarter in class, but you actually took it outside of class and created your own successful Kickstarter. And so you're gonna be able to add to your business, if you will, from your Kickstarter account. So let's, let's just talk a little bit about your Kickstarter. Yeah, so you know, growing up, I always really wanted to be an author. And I've written stories my whole life, not really shared many of them with anybody. Um, but I was able to, you know, sit in class and hear about Kickstarter and hear about, you know, the opportunities that it's created for, you know, individuals. In my mind, I always thought Kickstarter was something for a big business or for somebody with a big product. I didn't think that it would be something that could benefit little me, you know, to be able to write a book is one thing. To be able to publish the book can be very expensive. So... I took one of my passions, which is dog training, and I really racked my brain about, you know, some of the questions that I've had. I've had families ask, especially with those with children, how do I involve my, do my daughter in training my dog? How do I train my dog? You know, um, we get a lot of first-time pet owners, and I'm very blessed with the opportunity to work with them and to help teach them, but I wanted to make it a little bit more fun. So through Kickstarter, I was able to raise the funds for my first children's book, which is called Dandy Won't Dance. And it is about a little girl who gets a dog and she actually um, wants to train it to dance like she does. And throughout the story, she has to learn that not only is it difficult to train some, a dog, it's difficult to teach somebody that doesn't understand your language or might learn a little bit differently than you how to do something that it takes patience and it takes time. And, um, you know, our hopes is that we can actually use this book and send it home with our families so that they can um, use it as a tool to help them teach their children how to train their dog to do, you know, something fun like dance. 
um, and use that as a bonding tool. And um, well, you know, nobody has to have a dog to enjoy the story. It's got, you know, it's gonna have beautiful colored pictures from our illustrator. Um, it's definitely a tool that I am very excited to be able to use. Well, I can tell you, I was very excited to work with you on the Kickstarter. It was fun because we talked about it. I thought for sure we would be sitting down, we would be organizing it, getting it ready. And you walked in with it ready. I mean, you said, here it is, you know, and I looked at it, reviewed it, and it, it was ready to go. And you launched and 45 days later, or approximately 45 days later, you had a successful campaign. And I mean, that's, that's so admirable of course, for somebody to work so hard and do so much. And that's what you've done. You've done that in entrepreneurship all the way. And I am so excited about the book. Um, I know it's probably still going to be a few weeks out, but uh, you know, when it, when it does arrive, I can't wait to have it in my office and I can't wait to share it with other people. And I know you're going to be sharing it with schools and libraries and such. And it's a great extension of your business. And what a great way to do it through Kickstarter and use Kickstarter for what it's meant to be. It has to share with the community. And that's what you've done. So very proud of you, Destiny. I'm very proud of what you're doing with entrepreneurship. I'm excited for you. You've been doing this since you were 14 years old. I mean, that's just amazing. So uh, anything, words of wisdom to people that might be watching about entrepreneurship before we go? My, you know, my biggest advice is if you have an idea, don't sit on it. It may be, you know, a little bit taxing. It might be a little bit difficult to find the, the strength and the will to push forward because it can be scary to invest your time, invest your money, but you're never going to know if it's going to succeed. And don't be afraid to reach out to people who are experts on it because there is nothing like the opportunity to speak to somebody who has used, uh, you know, their own ideas or their own wisdom, even if it's not the same kind of product, the same kind of plan, to just be able to sit down with someone and talk about it, it can really kind of help you empower yourself into uh, going ahead and moving forward. Well, thank you, Destiny. And thank you again for watching another episode of In Your Business. Today, we, we interviewed with Destiny and she talked a lot about her passion with dogs and animals and turned that into a business. And it took it to the next level with Kickstarter to create a successful campaign to where she's now going to write a book and share that with others. You know, the passion she has at such a young age is absolutely admirable. And it's what I look for in every entrepreneur. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode as much as I have. And I look forward to many years of success of watching Destiny continue to grow her business and entrepreneurship. Again, thank you for watching In Your Business. Thank you.